In this presentation, an intertarsal corrective osteotomy will be made to correct a Charcot deformity of the medial column. The fusion will be secured with a VA LCP medial column fusion plate 3.5. It should be understood that the goal of the procedure is to provide functional reconstruction of the medial column rather than restoring the normal anatomy. If necessary, any bony prominences that could lead to ulceration are removed. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify the clinical indications, describe the surgical approach, perform the intertarsal osteotomy and fusion to provide functional reconstruction of the medial column, and outline the postoperative care. Clinical indications include neuropathic collapse and midfoot instability. The X-ray demonstrates a typical neuropathic deformity. In such a patient, restoring the medial column alignment improves function and reduces the risk of skin breakdown and ulceration. The patient is positioned supine on a radiolucent table with a bump under the contralateral hip to facilitate visualization of the medial side. The 2.8 mm guide wire is inserted retrograde from the first metatarsal head to the first TMT joint, following the axis of the medial column. Viewing from medial to lateral, the deformity can be seen. The normal axes of the first metatarsal up to the Taylor joint level, as well as the Taylor navicular segment, have been marked on the model. The resection planes perpendicular to these axes are planned and the amount of resection is visualized by marking the bone to be removed in red. The resection must be planned in the sagittal, transverse and coronal planes to correct the deformities appropriately. This plantar and medial based wedge will correct the rocker bottom and abduction deformities. It should be noted that the goal of the procedure is to provide functional reconstruction, to restore functional rather than normal anatomical alignment so some shortening can occur. The saw is used to remove the bony prominence from the plantar aspect. The distal cut is sawn perpendicular to the axis of the forefoot. To protect the anatomical structures in the tarsal tunnel, care is taken to cut up and over. The proximal cut is sawn perpendicular to the axis of the hind foot. An osteotome can be used to complete the osteotomy. If necessary, the osteotomy can be refined with supplemental cuts. The wedge of bone, which includes the damaged articular surfaces, is removed. This bone can be very useful as a source of bone graft. The bones are aligned and reduced, adjusting for pronation or supination, as well as abduction or adduction. The guide wire is now advanced across the osteotomy as far as the proximal talus while maintaining the realignment of the medial column. The compression distraction rod is inserted into the threaded hole at the distal end of the plate. The plate is positioned dorsomedially so as to span all the joints of the medial column and allow for two screws to be inserted in the talus, navicular and cuneiform respectively with the remaining screws in the first metatarsal. The plate is provisionally secured with a 2.8 mm compression wire inserted through the compression slot in the talus part of the plate. The second compression wire is inserted through the compression slot in the cuneiform portion of the plate. To maximize compression, the wire is inserted as far distal as the anatomy permits. The osteotomy will be compressed using the compression forceps. To do this, 
the speed nut is threaded counterclockwise so the forceps are in their open position. The forceps are positioned with the tips around the spheres of the compression wires. The handles are squeezed to provide the desired compression and the forceps are locked by threading the speed nut clockwise. In some instances, when compression is intended, the compression distraction rod could be used in place of one of the compression wires. A 3.5mm VA locking screw will be inserted coaxially into the lateral hole in the tailor's part of the plate. A 2.8mm hole is drilled to the desired depth through the coaxial end of the VA double drill guide 3.5. Clinically, this can be done under image intensifier control. The depth gauge is used to measure for the correct screw length. The star drive screwdriver shaft and handle with quick coupling are used to insert the correct length screw. The torque limiter is used for final tightening. The second 3.5mm VA locking screw will be inserted coaxially into the lateral hole in the cuneiform part of the plate. The 2.8mm hole is drilled laterally across the midfoot to the desired depth. Again, clinically, this can be done under image intensifier control. The correct screw length is measured with the depth gauge. The screw is inserted with the star drive screwdriver shaft and handle. Final tightening is made with the torque limiter. The compression forceps are removed. The compression wires are withdrawn. The compression distraction rod is unthreaded. The remaining plate holes are filled with 3.5mm VA locking screws and the completed construct is shown here. In this bone model, we can see the osteotomy has been cut, aligned and reduced. There are bony prominences on the plantar aspect which have been marked in red. The saw is used to remove these bony prominences from the plantar aspect and prepare the plantar surface for the plate. The compression distraction rod is used to position the plate so that two screws can be inserted in the navicular and cuneiform respectively with the remaining screws in the first metatarsal. The plate is provisionally secured with a 2.8mm compression wire inserted through the elongated screw hole in the metatarsal portion of the plate. The compression distraction rod is removed. A 3.5mm VA locking screw will be inserted using a variable angle into the medial hole in the navicular part of the plate. To do this, the drill is aimed away from the talonavicular joint into the navicular and a 2.8mm hole is drilled to the desired depth through the variable end of the VA double drill guide 3.5. Clinically, this can be done under image intensifier control. The depth gauge is used to measure for the correct screw length. The star drive screwdriver shaft and handle with quick coupling are used to insert the correct length screw. The torque limiter is used for final tightening. The remaining plate holes are filled with 3.5mm VA locking screws and the completed construct is shown here. Post-operative care includes immobilization in a well-padded, non-circumferential splint, non-weight-bearing until radiographic evidence of consolidation is seen, which may take up to three months, and the use of a bone growth stimulator may also be considered. You should now be able to identify the clinical indications, describe the surgical approach, perform the intertarsal osteotomy and fusion to provide functional reconstruction of the medial column, and outline the post-operative care.